right. Praise the Lord. Let's begin from Proverbs 21 quickly because of time so we can get at it and cover as much. The last week I couldn't really enter into the message of um, understanding. We just um, perused the introduction. So don't want to really enter the message. Amen. Proverbs 21 verse 16. Proverbs 21 verse 16. Proverbs the 21st chapter, the 16th verse. Praise the Lord. I see wonderful people. I see wonderful faces. Amen. If you've found that place in your Bible, say amen. amen. Proverbs what? 21 verse 16. Proverbs 21 verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of what? The man that what? Shall what? Shall remain. Understanding giveth us life. Amen. Understanding what? It gives us life. <laughs> We're no longer in King James days. Amen. <laughs> Understanding gives us life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so walking out of the way of understanding, the Bible says, such an individual, anytime there is no understanding, it says, you're going to be walking in the way of the dead. You're going to be in the congregation of the dead without even knowing it. Amen. You will understand this perspective or this concept or the depth of this scripture uh, by the time we're done with teaching what understanding is and exposing it from both what we started with last time and then what we're going to be saying today. I want to teach on a message that titled the way of understanding. The way of what? The way of understanding. Not knowledge, this, not wisdom this time. We've taught on the way of wisdom. Um, I recommend a message for you if you, if you missed it. Um, even if you, watch, you were present, you still should watch it again. You never... Again, this, this brings us understanding now. One thing you should understand, you know, about human nature, you never get everything 100%. And if you are smart, if you have understanding of that, then it means there is something you, you missed. Why do we read the scripture again and again? Why do we read the Bible again and again and again? And you read it this time and it's like, you, you, you're seeing something new, something... I've read this book before, but there's something there. Amen. Praise the Lord. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Meaning, the man is not supposed to wander away from the way of understanding. So it is God's will for us to stay in the way of understanding. The path of understanding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So me, understanding is the will of God for me. Understanding is the will of God for me. Praise the Lord. And so on this particular day when God showed up in the life of um, King Solomon... And he made a request. He says, ask what you want, and I'll do it for you. What is it you want? And he said to God, he said, God, give me a heart of understanding. He was actually asking in line with the will of God. He was asking something that God enjoys, that God proposes and wishes for men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in this month, as we are digging deep and drinking from the well of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, we are actually in the will of God. And if any of you is praying or desiring or asking or longing for wisdom and understanding and knowledge, you are doing the right thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Quickly, Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Just a quick reminder of what we've come through already. Proverbs 24 from verse 3 and 4. Proverbs 20, yeah. It says, through wisdom is a house, what? Build it. And by understanding, it is established. Last week, I began the teaching on this message, which, um, like I said, was just an introduction. Standing over by understanding. Standing over by understanding. And we looked at how understanding can put you at the helm of affairs in life. The Bible says in this place, it says, a, a house is built, a house is built by wisdom. So, here it is, my... I've built the house. I've built the house. He says, but if I'm going to establish the house, I need to do what? Have understanding. What does it mean to establish a house? When you're done building a house, you're done building a house, you put the concrete, you put everything, the mortar, everything, you set up the, the, the bricks, everything, you've put the roofing, everything, you've done everything, you've put the windows, everything. 
Establishing the house is when you begin to do things like house registration, address registration. You don't just say, oh, the White House in that, in, 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 in that corner. No. You want to go to the government and get a, an official legal number for your house. You don't come and just put a number by yourself. Where do you live? I live in Trollibusna. Where? 10. Fine. Someone comes to Trollibusna 10 and he's there. He says, this is a hostel. Say, not that trolley bus, not 10, another trolley bus, not 10. Where? You don't just choose your own trolley bus now. Am I talking to somebody? It includes things like plastering the house. It's one thing to put the, brick, to put the bricks. It's another thing to plaster it. It includes things like painting the house. Now, you understand it because the Bible says in verse 4, it says, by knowledge, that house is filled with every precious and pleasant riches. So, if I'm going to, it means I'm going to now put the bathtub. I'm going to put the kitchen cabinet. I'm going to put the chairs, the furniture. I'm going to put the dining table. I'm going to start putting every good thing, every good thing, internet. You see, this, I'm doing the work inside the house. Now, this is the precious things that are inside, the pleasant things, things that are pleasurable. But establishment is what you do before the furnishing. So it includes things that makes the house look nice. I've set the house up, but if the house is going to look nice and going to be livable, if someone is going to live, 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 live in it and says, oh, you have finished work in this house, then I got to have understanding. It takes understanding for me to see, oh, if I'm going to live in this house, then I need this thing fixed. I need this fixed. I need this thing. I need to bring in light. I'm not going to somebody. So it's by understanding we establish things. Hallelujah. Now, in the scripture we read before, he says, He that wandereth away from the way of understanding, he shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Understanding gives me life. Am I not going to someone? How do I build my life? Wisdom. But how do I sustain the life? Understanding. Am I not going to someone? Understanding. Tell me about understanding. It's very important. Praise God. Hallelujah. Take a few more verses and then you begin to get me now. Remind, a, a quick reminder of where, of, of, where, of where we left off again last week. Um, 1 Kings 3, 1 Kings 3, verse 9. 1 Kings 3, verse 9. 1 Kings 3, verse 9. Before we enter some practical applications of understanding. 1 Kings 3, verse 9. Solomon, God shows up to Solomon and says, and Solomon says to God, God, give therefore your servant an understanding heart. To do what? To do what? And we said understanding is that spirit that we use to make the right judgment. Amen. Amen. Understanding is the spirit. What? It's what we use to discern between good and what? Bad. Proverbs 9 verse 10. Proverbs 9 verse 10. I've taught on this, so I don't want to spend much time there. We'll come back to it. So I want to teach on something new because of time. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is what? How do you know a man that is wise? A man who recognizes the presence, the reality, the person of God. It doesn't talk about being scared of God, no. It's a person who recognizes the, 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 the existence, the reality, the influence, the relevance, the importance of the person of God. He can't deny God. Hallelujah. Only a fool says in his heart that there is no God. Only a fool says in his heart that there is no God. He woke up this morning and in his mind he woke himself up. Amen. Amen. But a wise man knows it is the grace of God that I woke up this morning. I was feeling so down. I felt so sick. I thought I'd not even make it to the morning. But here I am. 
And yet there was some other person who was so well, who was so happy, who was so successful, who got an alert, who slept laughing and happy, but is no more. Hallelujah. That's the fear of the Lord. But he says, the knowledge of the holy is what? Understanding. Tell me about the knowledge, the knowledge of, the holy of the holy is understanding. Remember, he says, give me an understanding heart that I may be able to judge and be able to discern between good and what evil, between holy and sinful. So every individual who has understanding has an ability, has an ability to know what holiness is. What is of a holy nature and what is of an evil nature. Because understanding puts you at a place of discerning, separating good from bad. Hallelujah. Separating holy from unholy. You know what holiness is in its reality and you live it. Hallelujah. Understanding puts you at command in living the God life. It takes a man and a woman of understanding to live the God life. Do you know what the Bible says? For example, when it speaks of the adulterous woman. It says a man who goes into a strange woman, a man who commits adultery and fornication, he says he lacks understanding. Why? He has no knowledge of the holy. Am I talking to somebody? How do I, how, how, how am I able to live the holy life? By understanding. You are able to discern good from bad. You know that moment when you have a person, I mean, you have Christians and believers who they, they, they know literally what, a, what is a good thing and they know what is a bad thing, but they have no, um, what I call, a sunesis. They have no personal, re, um, uh, personal relationship with the thing they know. You know you should not be doing this, but you are still doing it. There is no understanding. Hallelujah. Tell anybody, I need a knowledge of the holy. Say, I need a knowledge of the holy. I need a personal relationship of the holy. So understanding brings you to that place where you, where you have a knowledge. A real knowledge. Not just a mental knowledge. Like Paul says, he says, the things I want to do, I'm not able to do. Speaking of his past. The things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, therefore I notice that there is a law that is at work in my members. There is something inside of me. I should not be. Hallelujah. But the truth of the matter is, when you start working in wisdom, when you start working in understanding, your case is different. Because it's that same Paul who goes on to write things about grace. Under the law. He says, under the law, it is true. In, under the law, you were weak. He said, but listen to me, you are no longer under the law. Tell me, but I'm not under the law. I'm now under grace. And so the ability, my God, my God, I'm excited now. I made reference to the book of 1 John 3 the other time when it says, Whosoever is born of God sinneth not. The one that sinneth. He says, says, when, you, says when, you, when you're under the law, you sin. But when you move from law, when you move from law, you move into a place of a knowledge of the holy. Knowledge of God. Not just verbal, not just talk, not just preaching. We're talking about, I know God. Paul says that I may know him. In knowledge of the holy. Tell me, I want this knowledge of the holy. So I want to know God. Even as I am known. The Bible says, when you are walking in that phase, you activate understanding. How do I get understanding? Get, keep on knowing God more and more. Hallelujah. Job 28 verse 28. What is, what is understanding? It's a knowledge of the holy. I said it again and I want to differentiate it from, from reasoning. Amen. You don't understand everything I've been through. If you're in my situation, you will understand. You're not in my shoes, that's why. Mm -mm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have no business being in that shoe. Am I talking to somebody? What shoe should you be in? God's shoe. I'm not to somebody. What shoe should you be in? You have no business being in that shoe that you are in. 
We were created in the image and likeness of you. In the image and likeness of who? How you feel, listen, I love this. I always say to myself, you know, just because my experience is not in line with the word does not mean that the word of God is not for my experience. Amen. 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 So me, joy is my portion. The fulfillment is my portion. Amen. Wisdom is my portion. Amen. Amen. Say a good home is my portion. portion. Self control is, is my portion. Amen. Amen. A happy life is my portion. A great prayer life is my portion. A great fasting life is my portion. A good husband is my portion. A great wife is my portion. Wonderful kids is my, are my portion. Amen. Just because what you have is not in line with what God says does not mean what God says is not for your experience. So don't dwell in the wrong shoe. Tell neighbor, change your shoes. Change your shoes. Take off your shoes. For the ground which you now are in is the holy ground. See that? Amen. Understanding is the knowledge of the holy. So Moses started working on, you know, um, in, 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 in understanding the moment he entered into that atmosphere. When he met with the spirit, at what point was Moses filled with the spirit? That moment when he moved, when he entered. And he met with the person, the, the personality of the Holy Spirit. A knowledge of the holy. The Bible said this activates understanding. You start thinking differently. Hallelujah. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. So, so you don't need to look far for a person who is wise. Any person you can find in the scripture, any man you can find in the word, who says, I fear God, and really lives by it, that man is wise. It's wise to fear God. Hallelujah. But he says, he says of understanding, he says, he says, and to depart from evil is what? To depart from evil is what? And to depart from evil is understanding. So we, we want to compare two, verse, two verses. We just came from Proverbs um, 9. He says, um, the knowledge of the holy is understanding. He's saying exactly the same thing in a different way here. When he says, to depart from evil. When he says, the knowledge of the holy so I know the holy thing. I know the holy person. I know the Holy Spirit. I know what holiness is. That same real knowing of it is supposed to make me depart. Stay away from anything evil. It says the ability. Now look at this. Look at, watch this now. Knowledge of holy departing from evil. What did, what did Solomon ask for again? Give me that heart that is able to judge and to discern good. From evil. Am I talking to somebody? To be able to look at a situation, to be able to look at a person, to be able to look at nature and know what is good and evil, to be able to look at a house I just finished building and know that oh, there's the evil here. Amen. It is evil for this house to remain unplastered. Amen. It is not enough to build a house. True wisdom, a house is what? By understanding it is what? Plaster. By understanding it is what? By understanding what else it is what? It is painted. By understanding what else? You put electricity. Amen. By understanding it is what? It's said registered. You, you put water. Amen. So think of your life as you are right now. As you grow in understanding, you begin to know what is still missing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why does God, after a season, after creating Adam in his image and likeness, and there was no problem, one day stands up and look at Adam. He says, it is evil. 
God, who created all things, looks, he says, for the first time, every time up to that time, he says, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good. Then one time he looks at Adam and says, it is evil for you, Adam, to remain alone. May God remove every evilness from your life. Amen. Amen. He said, it is not good. Meaning it is evil for you at this level, at this age, at this size, at this experience, with this level of, of, of responsibility and this high amount of stress to still remain single. Adam. And God says I must remove what? This evil. To depart from evil. Amen. Amen. Every evil you are currently in, I see you departing from it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Sometimes evil is not only about fornication or adultery. Being single, God says this is evil. He said, it is not my will. I didn't create you like this, Adam. You know, I created you single, but I didn't create you to remain single. Ah, a man that walketh away from the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of what? So it's possible to be dead or dying and not know. You will live. Amen. 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 You will live. You will live. You will live. You will live. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if it wasn't evil at some levels to be single, why is it that some people, some, some people, you've heard of the stories, go all the way to a native doctor or at a, in a witchcraft oven to make sure somebody doesn't marry? If, if that is not an evil thing, why, is, why are you going all the way? Papa, pray for me. She said I will never marry. <laughs> and she's there. Look at my life, Papa. I'm now 38. Papa, pray for me. Yeah. Tell anybody that evil must end. Evil, must end. evil is the absence of good. He that findeth a wife finds what? He that finds a husband finds what? A good thing. May you receive your good thing. In your due season, may you receive your good thing. May it stay perpetually good. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every good and perfect gift is from what? Above. From the Lord. To depart from evil is understanding. A point will come in your life, you look and you reach and say, I need to marry. Tell them understanding enters. Understanding enters. I need to marry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. A few months ago, we taught on a, during a relationship seminar and I taught a lot of things. I, I recommend it for you. Make sure you go watch, you go watch it if, you, if, you, if you've forgotten or if you weren't there. It's right there on YouTube. I can't remember the name of this. The title of Ah, Right and Wrong Reasons for Marriage. Praise the Lord. Right and Wrong Reasons for Marriage. Praise the Lord. Make sure you go and eat from it. Amen. Amen. A point comes in your life, you reach and you're just like, not just I need to marry, I need to marry before this year ends. Amen. Understanding is entering more. Tell them understanding is entering. To depart from evil. Is understanding. Yes, there are some people like that. I need to marry before this week ends. <laughs> <laughs> that understanding has sat already. It has come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <sighs> are you learning something? And I began to say that understanding is needed in an imperfect environment. Turn about imperfect environment. An environment where good and evil exists is where you need understanding. That's why it says to discern what? 
good from evil. To be able to judge. To be able to what? Yes. Amen. To be able to judge. And I said, God doesn't need to be understood. Because he's perfect. Because you can't judge him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He says, give me understanding that I may be able to judge these dying people. Can you judge God? So you don't even understand it with God. But guess what? There are other things we can judge. And this goes on to tell you their imperfections. He says, know ye not that you will judge the angels. Tell me about angels, angels. are not perfect beings. Not perfect beings. And that may surprise some of you. Angels are what? I know some of you don't know, but angels can sin. Angels can what? Angels can sin. Ah, angels. Don't joke with them. When they want to sin today, they sin major. Can you, you can't believe it. Angels left heaven because of women. They are here right now. They are hearing. Angels are listening now, and I'm saying it in their presence, and they are not, they are not angry. <laughs> Amen. And that's what the Bible says. It says you are going to judge angels. So angels have free will too, just like you have will. So if you see an angel that stays holy, he is not holy because he is not tempted. He is holy by decisions and choice, which means in the same way you also can make your choices to stay holy. So it is not true that we must sin. No! Angel Michael and Angel Gabriel had just the same opportunity like the other angels, like Lucifer and all the other angels who fell of the one third from heaven. But they made their choice. You tell anybody, I've made my choice. She I got my mind made up. Amen. And that's why every time I keep speaking to you, and, and I'll show you again right now, why for me, one of the most important things, if you work with me long enough, you find that I always emphasize on is maturity. Maturity. Coming to perfection and coming to full age before you make some certain decisions in your life. A mature person is able to find himself in a situation but don't do or say certain things. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I understood like a child. But when I became a man, I did away with what? Childish things. Amen. Amen. <laughs> there were days I used to watch football. And I watch football like no man's business. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the days of complete sports and um, complete football, I think, or goal. I don't know. I forgot what it is. You spend your money buying those things and you sit down and you read and read and read and consume materials and sit and watch all the highlights and all the match and the one you watch before you watch it again. They'll show it again, display it again, and you watch it again and you do like that and your life is just going. Tell him understanding entered. Understanding entered. <laughs> I was saying for the other day, I said, I said, I said, it's been a long time I heard you pray that prayer. She used to pray, Father, deliver me from our foolishness. I used to be very foolish. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we all used to be very foolish. Amen. <laughs> but as you grow, as you grow, as you grow, some things, you begin to realize some things are really useless. A waste of your time. And you wish you can take back time. But that's one thing you can never take back. Hallelujah. So something happens when understanding comes into your life. You're able to discern good from evil. And listen to me. Listen to me. A man that doesn't have understanding will be in evil. Hmm? And not find enough reason to walk away from it. Because he doesn't have understanding. He knows the thing is bad. Somebody tells him I shouldn't be here. But there is no ability to discern. Discern. Tell anybody discern. Discern speaks of separating.
So God is perfect and doesn't need to be understood. God cannot be judged. But something happens in us and to us and with us. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6, let me show you. Paul says something in writing of the church. 1 Corinthians 6, I think verse uh, 5. Yeah, verse 5. Verse 5. He says, I speak to your shame. Ah, yeah. You know what he's saying? I'm ashamed of you. He said, is it so that there is not a wise man among you? He's writing to which church? The Corinthians church. Tell anybody, being spiritual, being spiritual. is not the same thing as being wise. 